Fewer than 200 people in recorded human history have sailed around the world non-stop and alone. By comparison, nearly 7,000 people have climbed Mount Everest. Cole Brower, a young lady from New York, just joined that club. And what kind of sailboat did she choose to do it on? The answer might actually surprise you. Is one heck of a sailboat. My job at Practical Sailor led me to an interview I just got to do with Joe Cooper, who's raced all over the world, including the America's Cup, and we talked about how to get one of our boats ready and safe for the ocean. It's a wild interview. If you want to see it, I'll leave a link in the description. Definitely well worth the watch. His wisdom is priceless, but that led our discussion to Cole Brower, who just sailed around the world by herself. The first American woman to do that. And while that is staggeringly impressive, she's staggeringly impressive, so was her boat. Most people who circumnavigate do it on a full keel monster, fully capable of handling the high seas. But Cole isn't a circumnavigator exactly. She's a racer. So she chose to do this trip on a race boat, in a race, which is even more impressive. The Class 40. This is kind of like NASCAR. Anybody can build one of these things, provided it meets very specific design criteria. The Class 40 was born as a result of the distillation of excellent yet simple ideas. Designers, sailors, and boat builders had been working on the idea of a dedicated offshore race boat for some years prior to the creation of this class in 2004. A boat somewhere in between a series mini and an ocean-going full-bore 60-footer. The original goal of the class was to make offshore racing accessible to amateur sailors with a little bit less money. The success of the class has moved it beyond those parameters though, with more and more professional sailors attracted to this boat. The Class 40 is aimed at solo or short-handed race teams with all controls led aft to the cockpit, and everything arranged to make trim and direction changes extremely fast. Here are the requirements for the builders. Maximum length 12.19 meters or about 40 feet. Maximum width, four and a half meters or 14 and three quarter feet. Maximum draft, three meters or just shy of 10 feet. Maximum air draft, 19 meters or 62 feet. And maximum displacement, 4,500 kilograms or just shy of 10,000 pounds, 9,900. Maximum sail area, 115 meters squared. Ballast, 1,500 liters. Fixed keel and mast, so no tilting keel or tilting mast. All that stuff's prohibited. None of that witchcraft. Dagger boards and foils are prohibited. Several prohibited materials, including carbon and Kevlar. Fairly tight rules to build a race boat under, but like NASCAR, that's kind of the point. To encourage competitiveness of the race teams by limiting technology and financial investment. And to add to all that amazing speed that this hull is already capable of, these hulls can plane, defeating their theoretical maximum hull speed when they hit about eight knots. If you've ever sailed a planing hull, I've had this experience on a Laser or an Olsen 30, you'll know all too well that feeling when the hull starts to plane. The speed will increase dramatically. You go from feeling the limitations of a displacement hull sort of trudging through the water to suddenly skipping across the top of that water. It becomes slightly weightless it's a wild feeling, and the speed that comes with it is highly addictive. The inherent danger you feel at that speed is a lot of fun. I can only imagine that feeling on a 40-foot race boat out in the ocean by yourself. It's wild. Cole's boat, First Light, is a 2008 Class 40, designed by Owen Clark Designs and built in the UK by Composite Creations. In preparation for the Global Solo Challenge Cole did, 
First Light underwent a detailed refit and thorough examination at the Newport Shipyard in Newport, Rhode Island. By November 2022, the mast and rigging had been replaced and they were all brand new. The mainsail track on the mast had been reinforced. The keel was inspected and repaired and subsequently reattached. All the running rigging, including halyards and sheets, had been renewed. The team dedicated an entire month just to reinstalling all the equipment, making sure every single detail was perfect. First Light also got brand new canvas from North Sales. For power generation, coal relied on a hydro generator and a methanol battery, the EFOI, which can also serve as heating in colder environments. She used primarily renewable energy sources with the engine's alternator being there as a backup for emergencies. Regarding rest on board while sailing, Cole said, I've always managed my sleep cycles well on board in areas away from marine traffic. I can sleep for two hours and then wake up, check the boat to make sure we're on course and that the sails are set correctly, and then go back to sleep. I also follow navigation from my bunk, so when I feel drowsy, I sleep. I tactically plan my sleep cycles in relation to sail changes and wind conditions. And to give you an idea of how hard this race is to do by yourself, it took her 130 days to cover the 30,000 miles. More than a dozen boats set out with her on this race, and half of them didn't make it. One competitor hit something and holed the boat. Another one lost the rig and abandoned ship as a storm was rolling in. Cole stared down 30-foot waves that had enough force to throw her across the boat. In a scare that was caught on camera here, she badly injured her rib near the halfway point of the event. At another point, her team in the U.S. directed her to insert an IV into her own arm due to dehydration. Cole was able to stay in constant communication with members of her team, most of whom were based in New England, and keep herself entertained with Netflix and video calls with family through Starlink. That's how Brower was able to use Zoom to connect with NBC News for an interview she did while she was sailing about a thousand miles west of the Canary Islands. Like 24 hours, I've been so angry. While Cole was technically alone on First Light, she had the company of some 450,000 followers on Instagram, where she frequently got candid about her life on board and the unforgiving sea while reflecting on her journey. Being alone on a boat for 130 days and 30,000 miles is staggering, but alone on a class 40 that will do 20 knots on the downwind is insane. This boat will cut up into the wind as fast as 10 knots. To put that in perspective, it's more than double the speed of the 40 footers that you and I sail, where us hitting eight knots in perfect conditions on calm waters is the highlight of our summer. The class 40 would slip past us doing over 20 knots in the same breeze. But we have somewhere to sleep and cook and relax. The class 40s are typically a little more barren than the regular production boat. You will get a couple of benches inside, usually a fairly sophisticated navigation and instrumentation station because you will be planning on staying in the middle of the ocean and you will get some kind of toilet, but that's about it. Outside, you won't find our sunbrella awnings and cushioned sundowner drinking seats. It's all winches and lines back here and you'll be in full race gear and foulies most of the time anyway. Comfort is not a high priority. Which brings me back to the conversation I had with Joe Cooper. Safety. Cole's boat was extremely well equipped with spare parts for the spare parts in every clip-in location you can imagine so that she would never have to be anywhere on the boat without being physically tied to the boat. A safety item that Joe pointed out and felt very strongly about we should be doing on our boats while we're underway. Something else about Cole's boat that Joe pointed out Everything in the boat is tied down, and I can tell you for sure, not everything in Lady K is tied down. Anytime she's in rough seas, a bunch of things end up on the floor. Stuff goes flying across the cabin. In Cole's boat, it's specifically built purposefully so that everything goes in a bin. Everything ties down. Everything's fast. Even the lid to my fridge has flown off. And you don't think about stuff like that, and Joe pointed that out to me. You really should go see what Joe had to say about all this stuff. It's changed the rules on my boat. That's for sure. I'll leave a link below. And I wouldn't be able to make these videos without the help of the patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make this all possible and help support the mission here at Lady K Sailing, which is to get more people sailing more easily. 
If you'd like to help for as little as a couple of bucks an episode, please consider becoming a patron. That's it for this week, guys. Until next time, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. Love you guys. Mm-hmm.